Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I will today tell you about some, uh, some data um, showing a connection between daylight exposure and health. So these data might be, again, obvious to you being so enthusiastic about daylight exposure. But, but you know, on the other hand, we scientists, we are the last group to know about these relationships. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'd like to start showing you a graph of a patient. Now, his problem is that he's insensitive to the cues of daylight exposure and electric light exposure. His brain is not sensitive, and as you can see, this is a uh, person that has been wearing an actigraph. This is a motion logger, and you can see activity mixed with sleep periods. And he's, he's delayed across this three-week period, almost two hours later bedtime for each day. And of course, uh, this is a patient that is very difficult to treat with uh, also light therapy, but there has been many uh, attempts to treat him. And this a little bit demonstrates uh, how we regulate our sleep-wake cycle. We are very dependent on the light cues, and it will affect uh, our health. Now, um, this is a study that has just been published, actually, <coughs> or maybe it will be in, in the next week or so. <coughs> Um, I worked together with Brazilian researchers, and we wanted to know how is sleep and wake cycles in a group of workers who don't have access to electricity. They are rubber tappers, and they work in the Amazons. And uh, uh, you can see uh, what we could do is to compare two groups: one group with access to electricity in their homes, and one not with access to electricity. And what we could observe that, yes, electricity do affect the sleep-wake cycle. In this case, you can see that uh, there is a delay of sleep onset in connection to work days. And in, in connection to days off, you can also see that both going to bed times and get up times are delayed for those having electricity. And this is a situation that we really much observe also this is a tendency that we see in a, in, in a modern society, that many groups tend to go to bed late, and they do get a shorter sleep than if they would adopt to, to uh, a 12-hour daylight, 12-hour darkness cycle. Um, <clears throat> In this slide, uh, a subgroup were wearing actigraphs, and they, the actigraph also included a light meter. And remember, these were outdoor workers, so there was no much difference in their daylight intake across their, their working day. Uh, however, there was a, the main effect we could see in the evening, and actually, you cannot see this, <laughs> but uh, um, it's towards the night. I have amplified this, but it didn't turn up in, in, in this slideshow. I'm sorry for this. But what you can see that is having electricity, you get more uh, light in the evenings. And that's the only difference between these groups. And it will affect the length of sleep, actually. We have also measured hormone profiles, and we can see a difference in melatonin profiles for this. So this is almost the only study that gives us so much information about uh, comparing such groups. We didn't know much about this difference. We only had a suspicion of, we could, of course, guess how things were, but uh, we're very excited about this study. Um, this is a study from Swed a Swedish sample. This is in summer, and at the x-axis you can see the number of lux minutes above 500, giving to a person uh, using an actigraph. And it is related to the number of, of sunshine duration minutes per hour. And you can see there is a significant correlation. This demonstrates that workers in Sweden, these are miners in northern Sweden, in summer 
where the sun is up all 24 hours. <laughs> Subjects are sensitive to daylight because there is a correlation between how much light they receive and, and, and sunshine duration. But I tell you, this correlation is not impressive. <laughs> this also shows that actually modern workers, they don't see much of sunshine. They are, they are almost insensitive to meteorologic, meteorological data. Now, <clears throat> we have a Bra uh, Brazilian sample and we have a Swedish sample. So we have compared them um, and we know that the outdoor workers, they receive a lot of daylight exposures. That's the left group. And then we have a, a middle group that are shift workers and day workers. And then we have an indoor shift work group. And uh, the, the group on the right, they are uh, both, the, the Swedish are in the dark, and uh, the dark color. And again, this, sorry for this slide being mixed up. Anyhow, we can see various exposure, exposure groups. So we divided the group in those who got lots of daylight and those who did not get a lot of daylight. And we related this to depression score, that is a clinically defined depression and insufficient sleep scores. And what we can see that for those having depression, at least in the Swedish group, it's very significant that most of them receive very little daylight. Also for the insufficient sleep, both in Brazil and in Sweden, uh, these groups have, have received much le less daylight. <coughs> uh, <coughs> this is also published this year, this study. Um, in a group of Swedish workers, so this is, this, these are about 15,000 Swedish workers, we posed a question. And the question is, um, do you have problems with lowered mood, fatigue, or lack of energy in autumn, winter, uh, more than other seasons? This is like a seasonal effect uh, question. And the answers told us that yes, around 50% of our samples say yes. 9% says, oh, I have always problem all the year round. <laughs> and here you have those who are, yes, depressed all around the year, probably. And there is a group of 40% that never have problems. Okay. Uh, in the next step, they also got the question of how much daylight do you receive in connection to work days, in connection to free days, etc. And the scale was from half an hour of daylight to two hours. And we could see in our data that bedtime seemed to be affected. The, more, the, the less daylight you receive, the later you go to bed. And also rising is very clear, significant uh, data. Those with lots of daylight exposure, they get up earlier in the morning. And sleep length also affecting affecting this, those with lots of daylight, they sleep less in this data. But actually, for all the sleep-related questions, those with very little daylight exposures, they were much worse off than other groups. <clears throat> so, um, now, we wanted to see if we could predict what, uh, if you want to avoid having a lowered mood, sleep problems, and less of e lack of energy in winter, how do you avoid this? And there seem to be protecting factors. So if you're male, you're better off. If you belong to a higher age group, you are better off. And if you have a lifestyle that includes exercising, it also seemed to be a protecting factor for this uh, health outcome. But we also, uh, <coughs> also used the daylight exposure question here. And all of these factors are very significant protecting factors. 
And what this table shows in this logistic regression is that for every extra half an hour of daylight exposure that you receive, risks are reduced with 33%. And this is actually a mean of, of um, um, uh, daily exposures. Okay? So, to conclude, uh, modern society induces something that we could call a circadian stress or circadian strain. That is, it do, it do affects our hormones, our stress hormones, the stress levels in the brain, it, it definitely affects sleep, shortens sleep for many. And uh, I just gave some ex examples of depression and insufficient sleep, but there are many other connections in our data. Now, the seasonal effects are very common in the north. I showed you data, a sample of representative Swedish workers. But if you go to the very north of Sweden, more than 60% would report problems. So it, it is actually related to latitude. <clears throat> so the, the further north you get, the more problems with seasonal effects you get. And remember, in the very north of Sweden, there are 27 polar days, that is, days without any daylight. So this is a very nice uh, laboratory for a researcher to work with. So um, uh, also, we could see that a non-exercising young female with little daylight exposure seemed to be at particular at risk. And guess what groups report more health problems than others? If you look 15 years back, young females are the ones that has risen in their health complaints. Could there be a relation to daylight exposure? We don't know. We have to do further studies, of course, but this is just a cross-sectional study, so we can't really tell a lot. But it seems that extending the natural daylight exposure seems to be an effective countermeasure to ill or bad health. I think I was quite short. <laughs> okay, thank you.